Warm greetings from Cluj, the unofficial capital of Transylvania, Romania. My name is Gabriela Mocan and I'm an academic, translator and cultural enthusiast who has directed and produced various cultural projects globally. This autumn we are celebrating the Romanian Rivata magazine, a wonderful project on which I am extremely happy and honoured to have worked with the European Literature Network UK. As guest editor for the rest of Romania section of the magazine, since its main focus was the city of Timisoara and its authors, I have narrowed down my list of writers to present some of the biggest names in Romanian letters today, whose books are to appear in English translation in the coming months. Needless to say, there are so many more valuable writings out there for you to discover, and I very much hope that through our joint efforts, British publishers will become more interested in what Romania has to offer. I take this opportunity to personally thank all contributing authors and translators for their great enthusiasm and to encourage readers worldwide to get their own magazine copy and join our riveting Romaniac Club. Hello everyone, um, I'm sitting in Wiltshire, my name is Rosie Goldsmith and sitting in Norfolk is George Siertish. Now uh, you all all know George I'm sure and I'm blessed to know him as well as a poet and a colleague. George is a poet, he's a translator uh, from Hungarian, he's a biographer, he's a teacher and he's an inspirational human being. George was born in Budapest and he's lived in Britain most of his life after he arrived here as a child refugee aged eight. Now George I've counted about 23 collections of poetry penned by your lovely hand and about 20 translations from Hungarian, major translations. Um, I wonder do you ever count any of them? Do you know how many? No I don't actually. <laughs> some of those books of poetry will be selections from previous books so somewhere in there yeah, we're roughly in the ballpark. Does it matter how many? No. No. No, I mean... Does, only, does, the, only what's good matters. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, what's good also are the incredible number of prizes you've won, the, the T.S. Eliot Prize for Poetry, the Weidenfeld, many, many, many. And in 2015, I was um, lucky enough to be in the audience for the Man Booker Prize International, which you won for your translation uh, with uh, Lajno. Laszlo Krasnohokai. Now, of course, um, Laszlo Krasnohokai is one of Hungary's, Hungary's greatest writers and you're um, his translator. So it's great, um, that prize too. And then uh, the winner in 2020, this year, of the James Tate Prize for a biography, for your first biography. And not only that, it's the biography of your mother. Uh, it's called The Photographer at 16. So congratulations on many counts on that. Um, and also, you've written about your mother in our magazine. George has contributed to the Riveter, the Romanian Riveter, um, and we're very, very proud that he did. And he wrote a wonderful essay here for us called Reading Timisoara. Um, now, George, that refers also um, to a trip that you and I made to Timisoara in 2018. We attended the Litvest International Poetry Festival, which was a blast, <laughs> I think. <laughs> um, now, let's talk about your mother, because your mother is the Romanian connection. So tell us about her, and then you're going to read a little bit from your essay in the Riveter. Sure. Well, my mother was born in near Cluj, in a small town called Zila. But as, a, as an infant, they moved to Cluj, which Hungarians know as Kolejvar, and the various people who lived there at different times all have different names for it. So she was born there in 1924 and lived there till 1940, when at the age of 16, she traveled by herself to Budapest to become a professional photographer, to be apprenticed to photographers, to work in laboratories. Um, so she did. Um, in the process of that, she met my father, who was um, actually working in a kind of labor camp on the Eastern Front. And then she was arrested and taken off to two concentration camps, first of all to Ravensbrück, which was mostly a women's camp, 
But then fairly shortly, and I think it was lucky for her, she was then transferred to another camp called Penny, um, where she was working in an aeroplane parts factory, but under very, very bad circumstances, as you can imagine, with concentration camps. So she was very near death when she was um, released by the American forces. Um, she spent a few months with them recovering, went back, married my father, had me a press photographer. Although not for long, because she had a very bad heart condition, uh, which she'd contracted at the age of 14. Um, so she couldn't go out and shoot, so she became a lab worker chiefly. But she practiced as a photographer, she won a prize as a photographer. And then in 1956, um, together with my little brother, um, she and my uh, father decided to emigrate, to cross the borders at night um, into Austria. And then we were given a, an aided flight, because we had absolutely nothing, um, to England. And that is where we have stayed since. And then she ended her life here by her own hand, mostly, um, back in 1975, so at the age of 51, which is, you know, seems now from the point of view of 71, very, very young. Mm. Uh, and that was her life. And that's uh, what I returned to after many years in order to write the book. I think um, so many of us are um, we're, we're overwhelmed by her story, which I know you took, as you say, a long time to write. Um, I wonder, you know, in this context, did she ever talk to you about Romania? Did she have a, um, and what kind of memories did she have of Romania? She spoke very little about any of her memories, actually. Um, what I do know is that when um, we were in our early teens, she would sometimes take us to the Romanian embassy, which was surprising. So she had these invitations. She must have been able to speak Romanian, of course, but she never spoke it to us. Um, and we went to events, to film showings and book launches and that kind of thing. And um, she, well, she had ambivalent feelings about everything. I mean, to be fair, she had more ambivalent feelings about Hungary than she did about Romania, because it was from Hungary that she was deported. Um, but she spoke warmly of it, um, insofar in the little that she said. And um, so she was, I think, uh, kind of, she was a Hungarian ethnic person, um, but basically a Romanian citizen mm. until finally settling in England. And you um, have written a lot about your own past and your own um, your childhood and your feelings as well as being Hungarian and all the experiences you've had um, in, you know, over, the, over the decades. How important is it, was it for you to go back to Romania? At one point, it became very important. Returning to Hungary became the first important thing, and that was in 1984. And from that time on, I was caught up in everything, Hungarian, with friends, with literary connections, um, with, of course, translation from that point on. But I knew that at some stage, it'd be very good to go to Romania. So I think... We, I think it might have been 1991 or something like that when we first went. We took a train from Budapest to Cluj, a long and journey with many delays at the time. Um, and I found um, Uncle Ferry, who I didn't even know existed, um, who was very kind to us. He was the same age as my father, and he's dead now. Um, and we stayed with Uncle Ferry just for a few days. And it took us round, Cluj showed us the state of the place. Um, and that then became, if you like, a kind of, without that, I couldn't have written a book, obviously. And out of that flowed two or three cycles of poems. Because then after that, um, I returned as a British Council scholar. We did a, I did a tour of Romania. And since then, I've been back to Romania a number of times, I can't remember how often, but as a poet, chiefly. Um, and so Romania became a kind of, um, it became part of the whole density of experience, really. 
Mm. Uh, and it's, it's very interesting. It's a very different place from Hungary. And I think I say a little bit about that mm. in my um, little introductory essay. Uh, would you be kind of to read, uh, give us a flavour of the essay um, you've written for the Riverton magazine? Um, and I do encourage people to read the full essay, obviously read the full magazine too. We're so proud of this magazine. It's been produced um, in lockdown um, and against so many different odds and with so many wonderful writers in it too, including George Sietis. So George, over to you for a a short reading, thank you. Reading to Nishwara. My first visit to Romania was in 1993. We were already in Budapest and took a train to Cluj in Africa, where my mother had spent her childhood. The train was filthy and the door to the toilet was off its hinges. A very pristine young woman was reading an old history of France opposite us in the compartment. There was a long delay at the border, and when we eventually arrived at Cluj, the station smelled of urine. My long-lost elderly uncle, Ferry, was waiting for us there, and we took a taxi to his flat in the centre. I had read and heard a lot about the terrible times under Ceausescu, but Cluj still shocked me. The shops were mostly bare, the streets were cluttered with rubbish, public transport was patched with ill-matched paint, Buildings looked dilapidated, and the river was bright orange. I had never before seen so many people with amputations. Cluj looked like a European third world city, a barely working, demoralised dystopia. Uncle Ferry was a darling, but we stayed only a few days, and the return trip by minibus, because the trains were on strike, was a long and tiresome affair through an equally dystopian, despoiled, landscape. Pretty soon I was back again, courtesy of a British Council tour of Romania, including a number of other British writers. This then led to further invitations, primarily to the days and nights of poetry at Neptune, but also to Bucharest, and more recently to Timisoara. I met a great many Romanian poets in such places, mostly extraordinary women, such as Greta Tartar, Liliana Ursu, Ivana Yeranim, Denise Comaniescu, and many others. Romanian poetry, on that evidence, appeared to be chiefly female territory. The result for my personal work was a set of sonnets titled Romanian Brown that appeared in 1998. The impression I gained from my meetings and readings was of Romanian writing as something more elemental and magical, less urban, altogether less Western than the Hungarian work I was familiar with. Whether this impression was based on anything substantial, I cannot say. It was not that the writers, and they were uh, mostly uh, exclusively poets, were not modern. There was little that was formal or traditional, not a word I much like when applied to poetry, in a sense of regularly patterned verse. There was perhaps a deeper appeal to nature, and a kind of ferocity, where the poems were clearly and recognisably modernist in approach. It was just that their material was taking them into different territory, or that they had started from a different territory. Mm -hmm.